The story then goes in a flashback. A monk releases Hachi, and it looks as though the young Hachi was trained by a monk for someone special. We see that the dog is frightened by a Japanese monastery and that the tag of its basket was torn in transit. While in transit, we, the audience, can see through his eyes through the box he is locked inside. He moves from one country to another through an aeroplane covering thousands of miles. He reaches a train station and the box he is inside falls off from a conveyor vehicle without being noticed by the transporter owing to the deafening sound of the train passing by. The puppy wanders around and ends up in the feet of a middle-aged man talking to someone on a phone call. The man's name is Parker Wilson, a professor who commutes to nearby Providence, Rhode Island. He finds the young dog lost on the railway station platform in Bedridge. At first, Parker asks a friend who lives nearby the train station to take him, but the man is reluctant, so he temporarily takes it home with himself. He puts the dog inside an empty room, hiding it from his wife, Kate. But the dog goes upstairs and makes his way into the room where the couple is sleeping and scares Kate. His wife doesn't like dogs in the house and already had an agreement with Parker not to bring any of them inside. Maybe she doesn't like him because her name is Kate. Parker takes the dog and puts it inside a storeroom outside their house. The dog remains unclaimed, but grows close to Parker and his family. The wife takes a photo of him and makes a flyer out of it in hopes that one day his owners might reach out to them and claim him. Parker loves the puppy and there is no place he doesn't take him with himself. Parker's Japanese friend, Ken, tells him that the dog is a breed called Akita and that the character on his collar tag is Hachi, eight in the Japanese language. Parker thus gives the name Hachi to the dog as it is considered a lucky number in a lot of Asian countries like Japan and China. Ken also suggests he didn't find the dog, but the dog found him, suggesting Parker is a reputable, well-respected man. Parker reveals to his wife he has named the dog Hatchy, as it was written on his collar. Kate scolds him, thinking he is now looking for ways to keep the dog. As they converse, they hear a thud made by Hatchy in Kate's room. When they run inside to see what he did, they see the demolished model of a house that Kate worked on for three months. Parker again takes the dog out to put him inside the storeroom. It's storming outside, scared, Hatchy looks outside the storeroom through a narrow crevice in the storeroom door. Parker rushes out and rescues the dog. They watch the TV together and eat some popcorn. Parker's wife eventually warns the Hatchy, but he sleeps outside in his own shed. Meanwhile, Parker tries in vain to train Hatchy in normal dog things like fetching a ball. Seeing the flyer, someone calls Kate to adopt the dog, but seeing how happy the dog makes her husband, she says the dog has already been taken. Ken explains to him that Akita dogs cannot be trained and that if Hachi fetches the ball, it will be for a special reason. Later, Parker's daughter, Andy, gets married to Michael and Hachi is in the family marriage photograph. Soon after the marriage, Andy announces that she is pregnant. One spring morning, a grown-up Hachi digs under the fence and follows Parker to the railway station. He refuses to go home and Parker misses the train. He hands him over to Kate and catches the next train. At 5pm, he returns from the train and is surprised to find Hachi waiting for him at the railway station. He is even more surprised to learn that he came to the railway station all by himself. A daily routine begins. The two walk to the train station. Parker leaves from the train. Hatchy goes home and returns at 5pm to receive Parker. By now, everyone at the train station knows who Hatchy is and whose dog he is. One winter morning, Hatchy behaves strangely, as if he knows something bad is going to happen. He then follows Parker to the railway station with a ball. Parker throws the ball towards him and, much to his delight, Hatchy fetches it for the first time. They play for a while and Parker eventually puts the ball in his pocket and begins to leave. Hatchy watches the train leave with a sense of longing in his face for his master to return. Hours later, while still holding the ball, Parker suffers a fatal stroke in his classroom and collapses to death while Hatchy waits for him at the railway station. At 9.30pm, Michael comes to the railway station and takes Hatchy home. From his shed, Hatchy watches the family and looks for Parker. The camera lets us audience see through the lens of Hatchy's eyes and we see a black and white picture of what appears to be Parker's family mourning over his demise. The next morning, Parker's family members and friends gather for his funeral while Hatchy goes to the railway station to wait. At night, Parker's close friend from the train station finds Hatchy waiting for Parker. He tries convincing Hatchy to stop waiting for Parker as he is not coming back. The dog won't budge and he tells him to do what he wants to do, which for Hatchy is to wait for his master. Soon, Kate sells the house and moves away and Hatchy goes to live with Andy and Michael and their infant son, Ronnie. However, Hatchy follows the train tracks to Bedridge. He goes to their old house and finds new owners moving in. Andy and Michael find him and take him back to their house, but Andy ends up realizing that Hatchy is pinning for Parker and opens the gate for him. Hatchy licks her hand and runs back to Bedridge railway station. 
Hachi now waits at the railway station every day. The hot dog seller Jashjit and other passers-by feed him. Soon, a reporter writes a story about Hachi and people start sending him money and cards. Ken reads Hachi's news and travels to Bedridge, where he speaks to Hachi in Japanese. He too misses his friend. On Parker's 10th death anniversary, Kate arrives in town to visit his grave where Ken is present too. She is moved to see an elderly Hachi, still waiting at the railway station for his master. At night, Kate tells a 10-year-old Ronnie a story of Hachi, who slowly settles in place. He wonders how Hachi and his grandfather met for the first time. Kate tells him how his grandfather was coming back from work one day and found Hachi lost at a train station. While she tells the story, we find Hachi waiting for Parker at the train station the same night. The audience sees flashbacks of Parker and Hachi together, and a last passenger pauses at the door of the railway station. It is Parker who shouts, Hachi, and the dog raises his head, runs to him, and they embrace. Hachi lies dead at his place at the railway station, while still waiting for Parker, and the camera pans up to the night sky. In the present, Ronnie narrates that his grandfather and Hachi taught him the meaning of loyalty, which means you should never forget anyone that you have loved. He concludes that Hachi will forever be his personal hero, and the class applauds. From the school bus, Ronnie is met by Michael and a tiny new puppy, who is also named Hachi. The film ends with Ronnie and the puppy travelling through the same tracks Hachi travelled years ago. The movie is based on a real story of a dog, Hachiko, who was born in Odate, Japan in 1923. When his master, a professor at Tokyo University, died in May 1925, Hachi returned to the Shibuya train station the next day and for the next nine years to wait. Hachiko died in March 1934. Today, a bronze statue of Hachiko sits in his waiting spot outside the Shibuya Railroad Station.